There's an old saying that you should always plan for the best, but prepare for the worst. This is good advice in the lab as well. In this video, we're going to focus on two lab emergencies that carry a high risk of injury, spills and fires. We'll give you concrete steps to prevent these emergencies and go over some of the equipment used to deal with them. Despite our best efforts to prevent them, spills and splashes do happen in the lab. Spill chemicals can end up on your skin and clothes or in your eyes. This can be a serious emergency, so it's always important to deal with the situation immediately. Chemistry labs are equipped with eye washes to flush chemicals out of your eyes. If you get any chemical in your eyes, immediately call for help. Ask someone to help you to an eye wash within 10 to 15 seconds in order to avoid serious injury. Eye washes are designed to treat both eyes at once and to provide hands-free, clean, continuous water flow for about 15 minutes. Eye washes can be activated by pushing down on the handle or by turning on a faucet and pulling a valve. Once you've started the water flow, your hands must be free so you can hold open your eyelids. Allow the water to rinse over the surfaces of your eyes, including under your eyelids. Hold and rinse slowly and gently for 15 to 20 minutes. And if you're wearing contact lenses, after five minutes, remove them, then continue rinsing. Your lab partner should assist you and notify the instructor as soon as possible. Your instructor may consult a safety data sheet to determine if immediate medical attention is needed. Finally, if any eye irritation develops or persists after you've rinsed your eyes, your teacher may take you to the emergency room. First aid treatment for skin contact is very similar to that for the eyes. Immediately wash the affected areas under running water. If you get a small amount of chemical on your hands or lower arms, you can quickly rinse your skin under the faucet in the nearest sink. However, if you spill a large amount of a chemical on your body, more extreme measures are required. Most chemistry labs are equipped with safety showers, which dispense a large volume of water over your whole body. To use the shower, simply step underneath and pull the handle. Because the water is released under high pressure, you don't want to use the shower to wash your eyes. Whether you're rinsing off in the shower or sink, it's important to do so for about 15 minutes to be sure you've gotten all the chemical off. If the chemical is on your clothing, you may need to remove and discard this clothing. That may be just the incentive to avoid spills in the first place. Fires are a major risk whenever working with flammable chemicals or when using Bunsen burners or laboratory hot plates to heat substances. To prevent a fire, it helps to understand that fires have three main components, fuel, oxygen, and heat. These components are often illustrated by a fire triangle. The fuel may be a flammable liquid or vapor or a combustible solid. Heat energy can be provided by a variety of sources, and oxygen, of course, comes from the air that we breathe. The key to preventing lab fires is to make sure these three components never come together. You should take the following precautions. Keep flammable liquids away from anything that might ignite or start a fire, such as sparks or flames. Never use open flames to heat a flammable liquid. Heat flammable liquids in a fume hood to prevent the accumulation of flammable vapors. Dispense only small amounts of liquid that may be needed in an experiment or demonstration. And cap solvents when not in use and do not store them in the fume hood when you're working. For a small laboratory fire, you can simply smother it, removing the source of oxygen. For example, if the fire occurs in glassware, remove any heat source present and quickly cover the opening of the vessel with a beaker. In the case of a fire when using a Bunsen burner, immediately turn off the gas flow if possible. Remember, never pick up a vessel or piece of equipment that is on fire and don't throw water on a fire as this can cause the fire to spread. If you or your partner's clothing catches on fire, the proper response is to stop, drop, and roll. And your first instinct might be to run, but running can make it worse by fanning the flames. Instead, lie down, roll, and get the teacher's attention. At the same time, your teacher or partner can also help smother any remaining flames. Depending on its size, your lab will be equipped with at least one fire extinguisher. Most labs are equipped with the versatile ABC type, which can be used to smother a burning solid or liquid or shorted electrical equipment. ABC type fire extinguishers release a large amount of a dry, 
high melting solid powder, which coats, insulates, and smothers whatever is burning. Learning how to use a fire extinguisher is beyond the scope of this video, but just remember the acronym PASS. P, pull the safety pin to release the lever. A, aim low at the base of the fire. S, squeeze the lever. S, sweep from side to side. Also try to stand back about eight to 10 feet, remembering to keep your back to the exit at all times. You don't ever want the fire to be between you and the exit. Remember, you're not required to fight a fire. If there is one cardinal rule for responding to emergencies, it's to always notify your instructor immediately of any incident, no matter how minor it may seem at the time. Your teacher will decide on an appropriate course of action and will start evacuating the lab if necessary. If for some reason this becomes impossible, call for help, pull the fire alarm, and evacuate the room. 